With the work with my mother, I ended up initially returning home one Christmas and hadn't seen her for some time. She formerly had been a professional ballerina with the New York City Ballet, and then in her early 50s, she started dancing as a stripper, actually, and began to sexualize herself in a very, very extreme way and project that as a sort of persona. And so, basically, I arrived home one Christmas, not having seen her for maybe a year at that time, and she answered the door to me and was entirely naked. And this was a sort of announcement of what she was up to with her life at that point. So almost to say, take it or leave it. In a sense, it was a sort of submitting me to a very, very complicated relationship, both between myself and her, but also within the broader context of our family. I was なぜなら私が芸術家になること家族が非常に反対いたしました。それからいつもあれ争いが絶えなかったんですけど、絵描いてることで、それからえっと。I never wanted to bring my family videos into my studio. Those two things were stay stay apart. So what happened was. Uh, my mother died, and this was totally unexpected, and it was, uh, uh, she passed away in, in uh, 1981, and uh, she was three months in a coma, and then she just died. And uh, I was with her, holding her hand, when she just left her body. And uh, my brother was on the other side of the bed. My father had been in the room until late that night, and then he just went home, and we said, well, we'll stay with mom. And, and then we didn't know she was going to die, and then she died. We were both holding her hands, and it was like the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen in my life at any moment, ever. It was just profoundly beautiful, profoundly sad, uh, and mysterious beyond belief. I mean, you couldn't believe what you were seeing. I mean, how, how is this possible, this person who's breathing, living, talking like we are right now, and then they become just nothing. When I first left art school and I made this work that was sort of darkly humorous, I mean, m my parents are quite religious. They, they go to church and everything. Um, people were like, oh, what, does your parent, what do your parents think of this work? Uh, and I was sort of slightly worried about it at the time. Art is a family business. Yeah, and it has to be like that. Friendship and family business. Otherwise, it doesn't work. The proposition was to either continue a relationship with her in a non-judgmental way where I could try to or an attempt to understand how she was using herself, how she was projecting both to the camera but past the camera to an audience to challenge a certain expectation of how she should behave or complicate her position in relation to these values and by doing so actually raise questions about the nature of those values that people were projecting onto her. Evolution, animalism, animals, we are sitting here in a cage uh, for and with animals. And this is very good, because we are animals, but in fact, we belong here, <laughs> mommy and me, because we are animals. We are still animals, wild animals, and biting away reality. This is my aim. I am biting reality away. <laughs> I'm really raised with my mother as a very strong female character, and, all, and both my mother and father as very, as very kind of... Uh, very militant feminists and so like like my father writing like feminist songs on the guitar and stuff like that so so I I'm I'm, I'm really raised in a in a kind of 
yeah, like politically charged feminist home. Yeah, do I see me and my mother as like a, as a salute to the feminist movement in art? Yeah, I think so. The big breakthrough, I've only had three or four, maybe five maximum breakthroughs in my life, real true breakthroughs. And when uh, my mother passed away, uh, for the first time in my life, I, and I was, I, I, first of all, I took three months off. You know, and German television was screaming at me. Like I hadn't finished, I got money from German television like a year and a half earlier, I think almost two years before that. And they were really, you know, saying, you better, you have to make this piece, you know. You know, you've, we've given you the money, we're gonna take back the money. So it was all this, all this stress. But I just, um, uh, for the first time, in order to try to complete the piece for German television, I brought my home movies that were on my shelf in my bedroom, I brought them into my studio. Where, and it, of course, too, there's air conditioning in there, so I wanted to keep them. But now this was, these were precious. This wasn't just your nice going to the zoo with your family. This is my mother, and she is not on this earth anymore. And she'll never breathe again. She'll never look at you with those, she won't look at you with those eyes again. And you know, it's just gone, like air. It was unbelievable. So I thought, oh my God, I've got to. So I brought these things in, I put them up on the shelf, and, uh, and then also included in that was this footage I took in the hospital of her, which I didn't even intend to use for anything, but I needed to see her last moments. I didn't shoot her when she died, that was the day after, but she was on her way out. So I just put those on the shelf, you know, they were there. I think I just had my first show in, in Copenhagen. It was one of the first shows at a commercial gallery I'd done with Nikolai Volna. And I, she's like, oh, so you've been to Denmark. What, what were you doing there? And I, I said I had an exhibition. So, oh, that's not what were you exhibiting? I was drawing. So, oh, so what happens to the drawings? And I was like, oh, people buy them. And she was like, why? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I guess you need to ask them that question. I guess they like them. Uh, but what would they do with them? I said, uh, they put them in a frame and have them in their home on the wall. And she was like, oh, that's strange, isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah. I guess it is, in a way, <laughs> but um, that sort of illustrated the fact that my parents really didn't, it didn't register that I, I, was, I had become, at that point, a professional artist, and that's what I hopefully was going to do. And that's what, you know, would prevent me from having to have a job, and also prevent me from ever having to go back home and live with them. <laughs> if I die, which of course is possible at my age, uh, he will be very sad, he will be very sorry, uh, sorry, but he will go on. I don't want to think about it. And I want her to be vital as long as possible. And that's why I also scream, you know, I say, live, live. You know, you have to scream at the cells and then they develop again. Yeah, you have to make people angry. Then they can live. America, there has always been a lot of friendship in our, in our relationship, just ever since I was little. And I learned so much stuff from her about how to approach art and how to approach life and everything. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky with my mother. Maybe I was slightly offended by the fact that they didn't, hadn't registered my success. I can't, I can't really remember, but um, yeah, it suddenly was completely validated. And then, you know, the next time I went home to visit them, uh, they were like, oh, uh, Jane from church cut an article out of the Daily Telegraph about you. I've kept it <laughs> every time I go home. Oh, there was an article about you in whatever, the, the big issue or something. <laughs> and uh, some that's kind of nice. I guess you, one always wants, wants parents to register your success. One day, you know, I was having a cup of tea and there's the shelf with the stuff of my family, but then within that there's the right-hand shelf down is 
the death tapes, you know. And so I pull this thing off and I put it in my machine, you know, and it was like, of course I cried like a baby. But then I started doing it every morning, like a kind of prayer. And it was unbelievable. It was like she was there, she wasn't there. And then I realized all of a sudden that my life, my family, going to the zoo, playing football with my kids, going to the beach is equal to making a piece for the Guggenheim and making, <laughs> you know, it was like, why the hell did I not see that if you're going to make true art, you have to make it. It's got to be one thing. It's got to be one thing. You can't be like, you know, Mr. Famous Artist here and then something else over there, and you can't keep those things apart if you want to live your life to the fullest.